the U.S. policy is to stand with the people of Sudan um, who overwhelmingly have been clear about wanting to see the war ended, wanting to see humanitarian access, and wanting to see a restoration of the civilian transition. That's been a pretty consensus position across uh, all of our engagements um, and, and continues to guide our policy. And we certainly uh, have heard very clearly that people do not want to see a power sharing arrangement that brings the RSF into power or a return of the former NCP officials. You asked at the beginning about the urgency of this moment. And one of the issues of great concern to us is that any sort of outright victory by the RSF is completely unacceptable. And we do feel in recent weeks, the trajectory has been in a negative direction uh, in, in that regard. And we believe that that is one thing, uh, one of many things the Sudanese people clearly do not want. For those who don't know, um, when I was a younger man, I was in Darfur documenting the horrific atrocities of the Janjaweed that of course is the precursor to the RSF. And we are at the intersection of the realities of on the battlefront and the realities of what is unacceptable, I think, to the Sudanese people and to the United States. The Sudanese people have been clear. They were clear in 2019 about the uh, transition they want to control their own future. And our position is nothing more than wanting to support the Sudanese people in continuing on that uh, trajectory uh, for an inclusive and, and democratic Sudan. We will continue to support uh, the African Union Initiative as well as others uh, that, uh, that advance this important effort by the Sudanese people. And it's certainly something we hear very clearly that the Sudanese people do not want to go backwards uh, to the NCP regime. And they certainly would not want to go to a future in which the RSF uh, was recognized as having political power. Absolutely believe that the previous pledges made under Jeddah should be implemented and should have been implemented before. Uh, and that includes both uh, violations by the RSF uh, and SAF. Uh, we certainly think that the uh, RSF should be moving out of uh, homes and forward positions. Um, that SAF should be implementing the standards on civilian protection and humanitarian uh, access. Um, and uh, that continues to be a core principle. And then I'll say in a second why I believe uh, the next round of Jeddah talks is the right step to make that happen. One of the main issues uh, that we've heard, particularly from SAF, but also from the Sudanese people, is a desire to ensure enforceability and that's why this round of JEDA in Switzerland, which is really an evolution of the JEDA process, uh, has focused on bringing in regional actors who are essential to ensuring both an ending of fueling the conflict and uh, guaranteeing uh, the agreements that come out. We certainly worked very closely with the Egyptian government in this regard. Uh, we have thought uh, it was important uh, to have the Emirates there uh, for the reasons that the Sudanese people have raised. Uh, as well as having the UN and the African Union, the African Union in particular, to ensure that this does not blur into the political process, which the Sudanese people have been very clear should be led by uh, the Sudanese and not decided by the belligerents or frankly by the United States or other powers. So this is designed based on listening to uh, the concerns of the people and of SAF about enforcement. Um, and the truth is the region can either be part of the problem or part of the solution. And part of what we're, we've been doing as the United States the last few months is to make very clear uh, to our African and Gulf partners that we expect them to be part of the solution. Um, and I think we've had some key partners on that and we are bringing along others. And I think that is one of the things we will see with these talks. For them to be different, it will be because the region is different. And I think that's partly based on some very serious pressure the United States has applied, as well as the fact that the realities on the ground have become so scary that they have spilled over into the neighboring countries uh, and that has helped create some diplomatic urgency. We do believe that uh, the parties could reach an agreement on a national cessation of violence and full access to all 18 states uh, for food and medicine with a mechanism for monitoring um, and enforcement. Those are the three goals uh, of this building out of the JETA process um, and um, we will give every effort for that to succeed, uh, and we are still hopeful um, of that opportunity. How do you guarantee that they are going to play the role in implementing whatever is agreed on in, in, in Switzerland? 
Well, the first step is to get to Switzerland um, to try to solve that problem. I think that uh, we would like for these actors to be what we would call guarantors of the deal. Um, but traditionally in these negotiations, you can only be a guarantor once the deal exists because systems can't promise to guarantee a deal that they have not yet seen. Uh, so I think this has been part of our argument or our, our um, a strong case for why we need to get to talks. And for those who um, say, you know, why particularly would would SAF do this? We we made this argument in uh, March to begin talks in April, um, and I think almost everyone would agree that, uh, frankly, SAF would have been in a stronger negotiating position in April than they were in May. They would have been stronger in May than June, and June than July. So I think our view is, as a practical matter, we believe with the diplomatic pressure we can bring. Uh, that we can help to get to that ceasefire and enforcement mechanism, bring in additional actors. That's part of what the U.S. is using its diplomatic partnerships and pressures to do. Um, but in the absence uh, of an updated agreement, uh, then it's harder to have anything to enforce. And if we can be really clear, the dynamics inside Sudan are very different than they were when those two declarations were written. And we need to have a deal that reflects those realities and gets us to the outcome the Sudanese people want, which is a full cessation of violence uh, and enforcement. So it is not easy, but um, it is much easier to start making progress when we are at the table and closer to a deal with the right actors um, than when we are not. And so far, we have not uh, been able to make more progress in part because of that lack of uh, coming together. And that's the case we're making. So the short answer is the political parties will have no role in Geneva at all. And we think the ceasefire process should be kept separate from the political discussion. Uh, but that does not mean there's not a role for civilians uh, in this process. We certainly want to engage with Sudanese civilians in three ways around the talks. First is a human right to know, which means trying to share information as we're doing on this show and in other ways. Uh, second is a right to be heard uh, and trying to get as much feedback as we can from Sudanese civilians, again, through these many uh, town halls and in-person and virtual engagements. And then the third, I think, um, is, uh, you know, a right to participate. And I think in the formal talks, that probably will not be uh, a role partly just based on the nature of how the negotiations will likely go. But we do think that the Sudanese people have a right to be aware of what's going on and a right to speak out on that. And we want to find uh, mechanisms to ensure that we are, are engaging civilians on all three levels, but not with the political elites, because that is really creates a different dynamic at the ceasefire than what I think uh, the people have wanted. Sure. Um, the the talks in Switzerland certainly build on JEDA um, and, uh, you know, it we continue to work very closely with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And I think this also speaks in part to your first question. On the question of consultations, we actually spent three months consulting with both parties uh, while it was still going to be in Jeddah and then gave uh, over a month's notice and consultation um, for the new Swiss talks to both parties. And we'd also heard very clearly from SAF leadership previously that the formality of the invitation and the advance notice was important, and therefore we uh, proceeded according to that and consistent with their requests.